My name is Kirosh Kirore. I'm an innovator. I work within the arts. I'm a visual artist and I create uh, books and artworks that communicate um, things around climate change and many other social issues. My name is Eliana Wanjiku Krasingadai. I am 10 years old from the Pony House Patre School. And um, I'm 10 years old and I am in year six. Um, I am an ambassador, I'm a Echo Warrior Ambassador. Uh, for climate change and um, Kenya's youngest Mashuja um, and I'm also the um, co-chair force, co-chair task force of Michuki Park. My name is Elizabeth Wathuti and I'm the head of campaigns and also the Daima coalition coordinator at Wangari Maathai Foundation and Daima is a coalition of civic actors who have all come together to advocate for the protection of green spaces and also advocate for the appreciation of the value of the same. Kwa majina naitwa Philomena. Mimi ni mwenye ni mwenye biashara hapa Uhuru Park since 2006. My name is Felice Omaitha. I'm a lawyer by profession, an environmentalist, and I'm also the founder of Where is the Love Kenya? Where is the Love is a youth-led peace organization that is set to reduce the prevalence of youth involvement in crime and violence. Green spaces mean so much to me, um, even within my creative space uh, process, um, because I feel like um, there is a time I just need to be by myself and in some weird way connect with nature and just pour out whatever comes. What, what they mean to me is that my home, where I was raised, um, and my health. Um, basically, my favorite green spaces are Michiki Park, Uhuru Park, Kuro Forest, and my home, which is not exactly a green space, but it's, it's, it's green. Um, yeah, uh, green spaces are quite meaningful. It's like you can you have to treat a green space like like um, let's say um, a butterfly, the way they're very sensitive. So, for example, the Michuki Park. If you cut down all the trees here, it'll be a dump site again, very dangerous place. Um, and also, green spaces are quite great. Um, you know, where you can tell all your secrets out to trees. The park is nakuwa mzuri sana. You, kama kama ni watu wale wana kujia kufumusika. Wana kujaga kufumusika hapa mtu wakiwa sasa hamekua taya andi na nyumbani ama saigine hana kazi na ukua, na ukua hapa ukua hapa unadilax because uko kwa, kwa, kwa park na uko kwa miti sasa unasikia hiyo environment ni mzuri kusida kwa nyumba because kwa estate ni manyumba kubu watu wakuna kitu ingine una peace when you are there inside kwa hivyo park ni mzuri hata wakati ilikuwa imeyabua itakatwa tulikuwa na usuni sana the various challenges that are facing green spaces uh, in our country and I will say the key one is the disregard of the environment in matters development. Uh, we do have the environmental impact assessment that is enshrined in our constitution as well as the Environmental Management and Coordination Act. But the issue with regards to the EIA is implementation. How are we able to implement uh, environmental impact assessment and audits? Another issue with regards to the environmental impact assessment is with regards to plurality. When you talk about licensing of any project, you can get licensing from the county and you can get licensing as well from NEMA. So you can find developers uh, seeing ways in which they can be able to you know, give some money to the county which is easier to get the licensing from the county as opposed to NEMA. So you think these are some of the shortcomings that we have with regards to uh, the environmental impact assessment which is very key when it, is, when it comes to matters development and protecting the environment in matters development. So what can we be able to do to ensure that that which is enshrined in the constitution is happening on the ground and that is the reason why we come up with this 
advocacy activities to ensure that uh, what it is that we are writing in our constitution is enshrined on the ground. Even the, when we talked about the fig tree, the fig tree was literally on the way of the Nairobi Expressway. And what happened is that the moment we raised our voices and we talked about it, uh, the EIA came into play with regards to rerouting and redesigning the expressway to ensure that the fig tree is still where it is. So that is something very important and it is a clear indication that EIA is possible. Protecting the environment in matters development is possible and if we do ensure that we have uh, you know, green in our mind when it comes to matters development, green instead of green, definitely we can be able to develop and we can be able to ensure that our environment is safe and protected. There have been so many challenges that have been facing our green spaces, both emerging and also existing challenges. And some of them include encroachment, degradation, and also issues to do with the infrastructure development plans. So the Daima Coalition has been working to make sure that we address all these challenges. And we've been working through working groups like the legal working group, advocacy working group, and also communications. The hello song I did was meant for stopping plastic pollution. And um, it was meant for telling people in the slums and in other big houses, mansions, factories, supermarkets, parks, to stop throwing things in the river. A sustainable city, to me, means green. You know, um, a city that uh, prioritizes green uh, as opposed to grid. Uh, this means green, uh, green parks, a lot of green spaces, um, a clear regard of the environment when it comes to matters development. Um, a sustainable city also means inclusivity. Uh, to me means inclusivity, inclusivity of different uh, people from different social, uh, different um, livelihoods and different uh, social statuses. When you look at uh, parks and uh, what I like about parks, especially somewhere like the Uhuru Park, the Uhuru Park is a free park. It encompasses uh, people from various uh, from walks of life and does not discriminate with regards to who has money, who does not have money. You can come there with nothing and still be able to enjoy the green space. So inclusivity is key and if we can have more green spaces that are free to the public, that are free for people to be able to enjoy, then definitely uh, that is uh, an example of a sustainable city to me. So any city has to uh, put various measures into place in order to ensure that the current generation as well as the future generation is not compromised with regards to environmental conservation. And that's the whole thing about sustainability, ensuring that the current resources that we have are not depleted so as, so as the future generations can be able to enjoy it. All in all, sustainability to me uh, means ensuring that we keep in mind the future generations, ensuring that we green our cities, we include everyone, we empower the youth, and yeah, putting green before green. When you talk about sustainable cities, we have to go down to its very, very basic, which is um, resources. Um, we know that there are renewable resources and non-renewable resources. So how do we live in such a way that the renewable resources can sustain our livelihoods, as opposed to a situation where we dig out a lot of um, the natural resources that would take um, a long time to, reju to rejuvenate themselves. And then after we've done so that uh, very quickly and spent it, then we are left suffering because we have to wait for nature to reclaim itself and um, get to a point where it can serve us again like it used to serve us before. The late Professor Angare Mathai always espoused on the power of one and she said that each and every one of us can make a difference, but collectively we are a force. And that's exactly why as the Daima Coalition for Green Spaces, we are trying to make sure that all Kenyans and everyone from all walks of life understands that they have a place and a space to fight for the protection of their green spaces because we need green spaces for our survival. We need them for our health and we need them for our well-being. And we also need to continue nurturing young champions of green spaces to fight for their spaces and to also continue revitalizing some of their spaces because we can reform and change the face of our environment based on what we decide to do right now. Development in Missouri, like in the West, we can develop everywhere where we cannot have parks or somewhere to, to relax. Because, kama wea umekua tired in a nyumba, utakuja kwa park na utaona watu na akili yako ita relax. Um, one of the things that um, kind of triggered this um, whole conversation in my mind 
was me going to my grandmother's place and finding that the river we used to swim in when I was a kid was no longer there for us to swim in. And I started asking around, um, what happened to the river? It was now left just as very tiny um, stream that I could just jump over. And that by itself was kind of disruptive in my thinking. I started noticing that many people had encroached into the river and they were thinking that um, a few meters into the river, they'd probably get a better harvest or something like that. And that was really disturbing and annoying because it just did not feel right. As a child, I just felt like um, this does not make sense. Does it mean that um, if everybody does that, then we'll do away with rivers entirely? And what then would that translate into? And um, very subconsciously started um, bothering my mind and it translated into my artwork. Well, so when we were learning about Wangari Maasai, I thought I should be like her. So um, I asked many questions about her and then I went home and asked my mum if I could plant a tree. And there was no seedling ready, so we planted this seed, which looks like it's meant to be an orange or lemon tree. So I planted it and then um, I asked her if I could plant more and she said, okay. I feel like green spaces should be protected and um, should be owned by everyone around them. And everybody should feel the positive effect of these green spaces so that they are also motivated to continue protecting them. And that is the only way everyone will see the importance and the relevance to a point where they want to deliberately put in so much work, so much effort to protect it. And by doing that, it then grows and expands. And uh, because over time it has been shrinking, that is the only way to heal, to help it heal. Even when it comes to community taking care of the environment, that would be a very important first step, but also we also need to figure out how policy makers also um, buy into this idea. I feel like it needs to start on a community level because um, that way, even if policy makers may be slow, at least the community is doing something. But over time, even these policy makers will see the changes that are being enforced by the community benefiting them and they will also be motivated to contribute. Each tree you cut down, plant 10 more trees. So um, so these are, this is one tree. So the expressway, I hope they don't cut down as many trees as they do to build just one small road. So um, how we can develop is every time we build a road, plant 10 more trees that we cut down for the road. Um, every time we're building a building and there's some trees where you want it to be, plant 10 more. That's how we're going to develop and there's going to be more oxygen um, and each time carbon dioxide is caused, we need to stop that because it's bad. Each time it's caused, at least there are enough trees to, produ to produce oxygen for us to breathe. Moving forward, there are so many action points that we can take forward in terms of making sure that our green spaces are well protected and that people appreciate and understand the value that comes with those spaces. And of course, one of them is focusing on how we can shape policy and ensure that we have policies that strike a balance between green spaces and also infrastructure development. You know that one of the greatest challenges that is facing our green spaces right now is the challenge of development. So how can we make sure that development puts green spaces and even trees at the center of it all. So, and the other thing we can continue to do is also revitalize our spaces, change the faces of our spaces and give them a people's view. For example, if I come to a place like Michuki Park, I know there's Wi-Fi installed, there are benches where I can sit down and do my work, and it's also safe and secure. So how can we make sure that all the parks and all the green spaces in Kenya have the same face and the same shape whereby every Kenyan out there, every Kenyan of all walks of life can be able to enjoy the spaces. So like recently, the Daima Coalition was 
was revitalizing Freedom Corner. And I know we put up some benches there that also remind us of the legacy of the late Professor Angari Mathai. And we also have some uh, pathways and we also were doing a lot of landscaping to make the place look more beautiful. So how can we make sure that young people and different people around the country are doing the same for their spaces, even back in their community gardens? And the other thing we can, of course, do is to fight for our spaces and make sure that our spaces are remaining as intact for the next generations to come. If we do not speak for our green spaces right now, then the consequences of our inaction is going to greatly and hugely affect the next generations. And of course, we do not want that kind of a world where our children and our children children's children are the ones who will have to deal with the consequences and even live longer with the consequences of the world's inaction today. I think we are motivated by totally different things and hopefully using our, um, our expression when it comes to art and when it comes to any other thing, maybe your children or your children's children will learn from it and maybe they will want to reverse the damage caused by their fathers and mothers, and governments, and everyone else. Living in Nairobi has been interesting, especially with regards to green spaces. Um, uh, where I come from is a place that is very green, a place that is surrounded by forests. So basically ever since I was young, I have always been used to seeing green, uh, I've always planted green, and that is basically what I've been used to seeing. But then over the years, I have seen the complete disregard of the environment when it comes to matters development. And even just looking at the recent uh, developments with the expressway, you can, definite, you can definitely tell there is the disregard of the environment. If you look at uh, green spaces such as Olulua, if you look at the Nairobi National Park, they have all been, been at risk at, as a result of development. And then we have the expressway that is currently encroaching the Uhuru Park amongst other green spaces that we might not know of. So that actually uh, brought about um, a sort of uh, interest with regards to matters uh, advocacy, with regards to matters uh, environmental activism. And that is the reason why I decided, you know what, I'm going to raise my, my voice and ensure that the green spaces that we have uh, are not encroached. Um, I think that we need to partnership with the government a lot because they have more of the potential to build things, build roads, plan, you know. Um, so instead of just telling them, do this, do that, we need this, we need that, and just leave them alone, and then, then they don't do it. What we do, we tell them, and then we keep on forcing them to do it until they want to do it. When this place was a dump site, nobody cared about it, nobody wanted it, nobody thought of cleaning it up and turn it into something. And then now, when it's purified and clean, people want it. Because, like, after this, the president launched it, people started saying, this is my land, I want this, I need it back, you know, blah, 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 ATC, fish cake. Many things that need to be done is plant as many more trees, um, um, make sure that green spaces are clean, make sure that rivers are clean, and to the government, this is going to the government and to all the people. I think there needs to be a charity to help fundraise, because um, if you see in London, there's these pipes underground, where they have, they have sewage flowing through it that does not affect the river. That's why in China, in Asia, and other places, rivers are actually quite clear. There are various ways in which the government can be able to come in and ensure that we increase our green spaces and we protect the current green spaces that we have. And some of the ways in which the government can be able to ensure this is one, implementing the current environmental laws that we have in our country, because we do have good environmental laws, but the issue is always with regards to implementation. How do we um, implement these environmental laws to ensure that um, uh, the public is able to uh, enjoy the right to a clean and healthy environment? The second thing that is key that the government will do is including, involving the youth in environmental conservation matters, because we've been talking a lot about 10% forest cover and we've been planting million, millions of trees over the last couple of years so if we, we've been planting millions of trees then that means our forest cover should be more than 10 percent right so definitely the inclusivity of the youth is key in, ensure, in, in ensuring that we not only just plant the trees but we grow these trees and the inclusivity is also key to ensure that we have different parks in our neighborhoods because we have different neighborhoods that do not have any access to parks and definitely with the COVID-19 pandemic there is the need for parks and green spaces so definitely the government involving the in such kind of activities, we can definitely increase um, our green spaces. What the government can do for us 
especially since we are to appear sana. We are to take and say something decent than what we are now doing. Because after all, we are paying the tax. Na na all the same, mutu atakuwa, atakuwa nini, anaona hapo ni pahali pazuri, pakoja kufumusika. Juu, kama ni pahali, okay, ni mi nimeweka yagu, clean. Na wale wegine na wale wegine. So, wakue na security. Security that our street children hakuna mutu wanakuja kusibua watu. So when you talk about matters development, what I've noticed is a clear disregard of the environment with regards to cutting down of trees. And what we don't usually realize is that the moment we cut down these trees and we increase our carbon footprint since we are developing with regards to highways or roads, then uh, what we expect uh, in the near future is that we're going to increase our carbon footprints and we do not have the trees to clean our oxygen. So in return, we are definitely going to have all these consequences with, the, with regards to compromised air quality, with regards to you know not even having shade from the scorching sun, uh, and also just other biolog biological you know, advantages that the trees usually provide with regards to carbon emissions. Me, I am in Rwanda. Rwanda is a very clean country. So I am in the country of Uko, where I am in the country of Uko, where I am in the country of Uko, where I am in the country of Na hata nini kuna kuwaga na siku inaidago Muganda siti. Iyo siku, kila mtu wote, ana, hata president himself, anajipresent ana, who green the country. So nikaona iyo, ni, iyo nikaeda na iyo kacha ya kuwa na, na, na iyo kupeda ku, kitu wabaye environment ikuwe safi. With regards to the expressway, there are definitely a couple of things that I will point out with regards to eth ethical development. And the first thing is the lack of extensive public participation. And the second thing is with regards to the disclosure of information, disclosure of public information. When you're talking about a project that is of public interest, then there is need for such information regarding the project to be accessible to the public. We already have the Access to Information uh, Act that, uh, that, that clearly states that uh, such matters of public interest are going to be accessible to the public. The third thing uh, is also with regards to disclosure, uh, with regards to the public-private uh, partnership that uh, the Nairobi Expressway is currently enshrined. And some of the questions that we will have is the China Roads and Bridges Corporation that is currently, you know, handling the Nairobi Expressway. There has been a lot of talks with, our, uh, with regards to the CRBC being banned by World, Life, by World Bank with regards to development. So if the CRBC is banned, then why are we, you know, engaging them in such matters, kind of in su such uh, matters development? So these are the kind of issues that we, we wanted to point out and see ways in which we can be able to ensure that any sort of development that we that does take place in our country is one people oriented and second there is the transparency with regards to information so that we don't have to feel like you know we are giving our consent to a project that one is going to be detrimental with regards to our environment detrimental with regards to our social life because people depend on these green spaces detrimental with regards to our economic life because there are vendors who depend on the green spaces as well and it's basically going to you know um, be detrimental with regards to our quality of life so these are the reasons why we need to question the any sort of development that that takes place you know is it ethical does it uh, follow the necessary uh, procedures that are supposed to be followed yeah when it comes to infrastructure development for example the government is building an expressway from the airport to Westlands in Nairobi and um, you wonder how much of a necessity versus um, all the destruction that will happen during the process and after the road has been constructed. So um, the amount of um, greenery that has to go to pave way for the road, um, construction by itself is also very huge in terms of carbon emissions and pollution. So just the idea of wanting to give an extra privilege to people who have survived for the last 50 plus years using the same roads that we had before to access the airport. Is it really, really, really a necessity or is it just um, an extra convenience for the people who think because they can afford it that they want it because um, we hear that there'll be a toll for using that road so the idea of a toll is an extra so the only people who will use it are the people who have 
an extra back, an um, extra financial strength to do that. If we are honest to ourselves, there could be other ways of doing it. Our technology allows other ways of doing it that are not as polluting as the construction of the road may not be something that you considered yet. So if you consider the long-term price that you have um, done or will have to pay, you may reconsider that idea. Young people have an opportunity to talk about green spaces and seeing ways in which you can be able to protect them as well as increase the green spaces in our country. And this is the reason why I joined the Daima Green Spaces. Daima Green Spaces is a consortium of different environmental organizations as well as environmental enthusiasts who want to seek ways in which we can increase our green spaces, protect our current green spaces at risk, and see ways in which we can be able to involve the youth and the younger generation in protecting the environment and standing up for it. It's um for you, for your spirit, for your soul. And together, I feel like we have no excuse. Our only limitation is our imagination. <laughs>